How many of you remember the Encarta Encyclopedia? It was in 95 that I first tried it on my dad's computer. It was awesome for me because with this single CD-ROM, we no longer needed to, to spend time into looking at the old books. And on top of that, we had multimedia files, so it brought something fresh in the way of learning. That, that sprung the PC era. I'm sure many of you just don't know the, this, this era. Bringing along the internet. The Web 1.0 is more about static pages connected by hyperlinks. There are few content producers with the vast majority of users simply acting as consumers of content. Technologically, Web 1.0 is purely concentrated on presenting, not creating. Then came the, re the revolution, Wikipedia, a free, collaborative, and multilingual online encyclopedia. This is an example of the new web where the internet is a platform for collaboration and information sharing. The web 2.0 let the user also be producer of content within the blogs, forums, and so on. And then with the arrival of the social networks, people create and share diary contents. So, um, it's what not an easy task to shift from, from Encarta to Wikipedia, because I first not really rely on the articles. I'm sure you did the same. I, I tried to verify the sources with other sources, the, the information of Wikipedia. But today, no. We all trust on Wikipedia articles. And I feel so hooked to the internet today because when I don't have immediate access to internet, I feel lost. For example, when I, when I go for lunch with my colleague and we come across a subject we don't really know about, we directly pull out of smartphone and get the information we want. This is how we brought an, a new illness, a new uneasiness, named the nomophobia. Nomophobia is an abbreviation for no mobile phone phobia. How many of you tend to be anxious when you lose your phone, run off of battery or credit, etc.? In Britain, nearly 50% of the user of the user of phone do feel the nomophobia. It's a lot of people, right? So basically, Web 2.0 was more of a social change, not technical one. But Web 3.0 will be driven by technical technological change. I don't know if you know Tim Berners-Lee, the, the creator of, of the World Wide Web. He talks about the semantic web. But what is the semantic web? He said it's about the meaning of the data. Let's say I'm a beer smart collector. This is the best beer in the world. So I've collected a hell lot of maths, and for each one, for each one, I made a descriptive document. That's a lot of documents. But how can I search for a specific mat? Of course, using Google. This is the web we have today, a huge collection of documents interconnected. But what if I want to search for a specific all, all the red mats? What do I get? I get the red mats, mats with the red sea, mats for the red chimney, another good beer. It's not really intelligent. The web was not designed to teach to the computer what the information really means. Humans understand uh, meanings with the context. If someone says, I want a Jaguar, what do you understand? That you want a cat, um, a car, or maybe the operating system of Apple? This is an example of different meanings for the same syntax. So why can I teach? to a computer what the information really means. We have to structurally describe that a beer mat is a beer mat and that red is a color. So for that, we need a language. It starts with words. Words, online words, is XML. We describe things with XML documents. But we cannot just describe things with, with words. We need more. We need grammar. Online grammar, 
is resource description framework. So if I say this beer mat is from Belgium, I have a subject, predicate, and object. So with the RDF, I can explain concept and main, make connection between them. If I, if I say this mat is from Belgium, therefore it's from Europe. But it's not sufficient. We need more logic and expression. If I say I got this beer mat from my uncle, how can a computer understand what it an, is an uncle? So I can explain it thanks to the web ontology language. So with, with this language, we can explain many things. But there are still, still some challenges and skeptical reaction about the semantic web. For example, it will, it will not be easy to incorporate the semantic web into the pre-existing one then it depends on the honesty of the people. People may include spurious metadata into the, the web. What about privacy? Let's think about that. An advanced implementation of the semantic web will make, will make much more easier for government to control uh, the viewing and creation of online, of online information. And then there are still a lot of work to have a complete and, uh, language. So, rather than just linking page together as we do today, we're gonna link every ID, every little no. We are going to put everything down into the most primitive informational element, and then we assemble them. So we have a web full of meaning, a web of data, that, it, that it, it can be processed by the machines. We can see internet or the network or if internet as, um, as a huge but unique machine, which can be compared to our brain, which, where all the neurons are connected to each other. But don't push too much the comparison, as your brain is not doubling power every two years. Let's go further and elaborate another projection in the future, the Internet of Things. If I take the example of uh, an electronic infrastructure in a building, switches, sockets, or thermostat, almost none of them talks to each other. As we can see in a typical house, all, all, the, all the devices with different opinion on, as to the time of the day. So, today, computers, and specifically internet, are wholly dependent on, the, on humans for information. But I showed that with the semantic web, computers will know and understand everything. So if all the objects can be connected together uh, through internet, the computer will know about things. So we could, we could count and track everything and greatly reduce the cost, waste, and loss. We, we could know if something needs to be repairing or replacing so the Internet of Things has a huge potential, maybe to change the world as in Internet did, no? Let me give you some example about what is Internet of Things. I don't know about you girls, but we guys tend to lose our car key in, at home. And what is really bugging is where my, my, room, my roommates, of course being a girl, came with this irritating remark. You will find them in the last place you look. Yeah, thank you. But what if you could ask to Google, where are my keys? Google, knowing who you are and uh, the address, the electronic address of your bunch of keys, sends a message to it to get its localization, and then within seconds, send you back your keys are next to your iFi. Great, no? In the Internet of Things, every single object will be connected together through Internet. Another example is a connected car. You need to go to Brussels, your car checks the traffic, change your itinerary to avoid the, the traffic jam. Okay, it, it's true so far. But if all the cars are connected together, the implementation of the, of the automatic driving will be so much easier because your car will know where are all the others, where they are going. And with the new European GPS coming, Galileo, will have the localization within 30 centimeters. No more traffic jams. All the traffic will be shared out among all the existing roads. The traffic lights will change on their own initiative to lighten the, the, the traffic. 
The third example is definitely my favorite one, the connected fridge. The fridge will be connected to the recipe website, to the supermarket, to, to the medical worldwide database, to the product website, and so on. So if you want to cook a particular dish, your fridge will first check the, the recipe on the website. Not the website we know today, but the same one with meanings. Think about, think about the, the semantic web. So after having checked the recipe, it will verify if all the ingredients are in your fridge. If you are short of something, no problem. It will contact the, the, the supermarket and order it for you. In, on, the, on the end, it can also propose you another receipt with the things that are in your fridge. And what if it could also find out that your next girlfriend is suffering from of a specific allergy? Yeah, it's, it's all about guys cooking for girls today, right? So it knows, your fridge knows that she's coming, thanks to your electronic diary. And then maybe it can also check her taste. So you don't, you don't, you don't have to worry about that. Your fridge will, will do the job, and you will win the point. But for me, the, feature, the most interesting feature in the, in the connected fridge is about the freshness of all the things inside. Take the example of the, of the carton of milk. It has its proper chip, so your fridge knows that it has been produced on that day, that it has been distributed on that way, etc. Not only the location is tracked, but also the temperature it, that it has been subjected to. So the use by date on the box is no longer the, the, the best information. The, the be the, your fridge can calculate the real one. If your, if your cartoon of meal stays two hours or you're out of your fridge, your fridge can calculate the new date. It can save waste and disease. But what all this new technology implies? As you have seen, there's a lot of advantages. Less stress, so less attack. Everything is done faster, in a safer manner, and more accurately. But all these pro have a price to pay. All the data have to be shared through internet. So your key and car localization can be known at any time. What you eat is tracked, your medical uh, data as well. But let's think about it. Do you know the Coyote device integrated with a GPS and a, and, a, and a SIM card? So this company already know every little movement you do. Another example is the supermarket cart. They, they know what you eat. So it's already happening. They, 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 they know a lot of data about you. When I, when I went to Colombia, I met people from a remote tribe. Yes, my air was quite dirty. I'm sorry, I was working for days in the jungle. But the army was traveling across the country to make a census of the population. But many of these people just didn't know how old they were. No data. In all society, over the years, more and more data are shared and stored. For me, the main con is more about the, our ability to think and remember. If your car drives you somewhere without you to control it, you won't remember the way. If your, if your fridge tells you every single step to read your receipt, you won't remember it. If Google tells you where are your keys, you won't search it even just a little. So you will be so dependent to the, to the internet. You will live inside the web, not with the web as today. Another con is about, uh, another con is about, is that you will be driven by internet. Your appointments will be taken automatically by, by uh, your computer. Google search are already personalized. This is the danger of the risk of control of your life. But entrepreneurs may think about the huge potential of the future of the web. The future of the web development will be about 
services-oriented architecture. I, as we can see today, the number of, of uh, API available on the web. If your application needs some geographical data, no problem. You, have, you can contact the Google Map API and you have the information you want. So all the services can be connected together to create new one. The semantic web, we can, we're going to have services with the, with the semantic web to process the data behind and create new information. Think about services like Kayak, which create new information, flight price comparison. Then the Internet of Things has a huge potential as well. Hardware to install in all the objects, services to control and process all the data. Think that in the future there will be more objects connected than human. So the collective intelligence and the artificial one is really a key to the, to the future of the web. And please don't limit your imagination. Thank you.